Tetris. What's not to love about an absolutely well-made game the world over, only to then be destroyed by a company that doesn't seem to know its fan base much anymore? No offense meant to some employees at the Tetris Company. Starting in 1984, made by the hands of a former Soviet software engineer in Alexei Pajanov, to a port made for the Nintendo Entertainment System in the US and EU in 1989, to the madness that is Tetris the Grandmaster by Akira, to the guideline Tetris competitive scene. This is the only time no research is required except to check certain things that I was baffled on as I've played both of these games for a while. I will be giving you my thoughts from what I've played as a Pro-Am player. I will be comparing two open-source guideline Tetris-like stackers, both of which are highly customizable since that is a huge factor into these games. They are Nolpomino from 2011, made by Null No Name before losing his Google account. Google, why would you do that? And Techmino by Studio 26F from 2021, the earliest release date on the GitHub page. I'll get to them in a minute. However, as I keep researching and you keep listening, all I care about is that you are enlightened enough to consider the software in this series. My name is Dixendo Kokiwuls, and this is Computing Comparisons. You may be asking, Nixendoig, didn't you already make some videos on Nolpomino and Techmino? Why yes, I did. Several times on the channel, in fact. There's a playlist for it, linked below and on the top right hand corner of your screen. I will be starting today's episode with Nolpomino, given how old and crusty it is. It is a stacker from 2011, with its latest version 10 years later. It's native for Windows and Linux, unknown for Mac users, and boasts quite the number of features in terms of customization, not only cosmetically, but mechanically as well. This is similar to Techmino, but I will touch on the differences in that segment. Getting back to Nopomino, it's clear that this game doesn't get any love anymore, judging by its latest release, 0.7.6D. It's clear that the game is abandoned, but that doesn't mean anyone can't make it better under the BSD2 clause license. I have yet to find one fork of it that could potentially be good for the rest of its community. Granted, JDK8 is not the language used as per the original game. Getting to the features, there are a lot, so I will only touch on the ones to use when practicing for any guideline Tetris game since that's the primary goal of this episode. A quick note is that it's frighteningly accurate to many different Tetris games and puzzle games, which is why this game classifies as a stacker and not a Tetris game, for it doesn't follow the Tetris guideline. The guideline is a set of rules for what makes a Tetris game a Tetris game, started in 2001. Its current version is from 2009, what has happened to Tetris nowadays? The features in Nopomino for practicing guideline are too numerous, so here are the settings I personally use when doing so. It's recommended that if you use a bot, you use PoochieBot version 1.25. Both the regular and defensive versions will work just fine. I will not judge you on which version you decide. The think thread should be enabled, and the move and think delay should be set to 10. After setting the A button for player 2 and saving these settings, you're ready to practice against the AI, provided you ensure that player 2 is the AI. I personally use standard fast B as my rule set of choice, which is built in. You can use many of the other Tetromino rule sets, including Standard, which is the regular rule set as dictated in the guidelines, selected for you when you have your initial boot of the game. 
If your delayed auto shift and automatic repeat rate are too fast, change them under tuning in the settings. There, you can change the frames for each of them. These are the settings I use when practicing, and they work just fine for my playstyle. Its customizability is to that of Arch Linux-based distributions, but has the stability of Debian GNU Linux without the old packaging. It's all right there in front of your face, like how obvious Ichikanito's skill at the guitar is. You can't deny the endless possibilities you can use in terms of how you want to play it. It's simply a hardcore Tetris player's dream. The one con I would give it is that the game is so old and rusty that nobody seems to play it anymore, which saddens me a bit. But at least we have other options like Tetrio, Gestress, Tecmino, and other official guideline Tetris games like Puyo Puyo Tetris or Tetris Effect Connected, for example. Guideline is not just covered for the players of this game, but also Grandmaster and NES Tetris are in there too, as well as Super Puzzle Fighter and Puyo Puyo, labeled as SPF and Avalanche respectively. There's a lot more I could go on about, but I'll stop myself here. Shall we move on to Tecmino? I think we should. Now we get to the Chinese-made, lure-driven stacker, Tecmino. Created by Mr. Z, or Mr. Z, and user 604, with more help from others within and outside of China. I'm not 100% confident on that claim. It's from 2021 at the earliest, and it's on GitHub and Gite, a Chinese state-run GitHub clone, which, well, admittedly, won't work very well. Despite the file management, it's a well-polished Love 2D framework game and is licensed under the lesser General Public License version 3, which is not too bad if you ask me. Unlike the previous one, you'll usually be in a custom spin system made for this game, but I always change it to SRS Plus, which is Tetrio's default spin and kick system. If you want to practice for Tetrio, despite the 60 FPS, this is a good option to do so. Also, you set the ARR and DAS in frames, but not like in Nopomino, where you have to select left and right. These values can be set with a mouse, as they're sliders. I do this all the time for testing and tuning, personally speaking. Now getting into the game. It's clear that you can customize it in ridiculous ways, from the color of the blocks, to the background, to even some settings when starting a custom game. It's all customizable to your playstyle and or convenience. It's very symbiotic for someone like me, who likes to play a particularly defensive opening main style. Yes, I'm that opener main that has a few in his opener vocabulary, so what? Anyway, unlike in Nopomino, you can go much faster if you're good enough, similar to hitting a flick shot in CS2 in milliseconds. I wouldn't say that precise, but you get the idea, I hope. It's a much smoother and faster playing game once you get used to the settings you change to fit your needs and style. It's fitting that a game be this advanced. Even that style of yours can be tested in the online multiplayer with servers in China, if I'm not mistaken. Either that, or multiplayer isn't really a thing for a spook-free online game, from what I'm aware of, having played Zonotic in Instagab servers. More into the customization options, at least it's primarily targeted for guideline players. But the single player has a ton of different modes, and is the only way to practice Tetris 99 on PC. How they were able to code in multiple CPU players at once is just mind-blowing. Well done on the part of the developers. Getting back on topic, this is the most of the gist of practicing the guideline Tetris without many issues, even setting things to how the guidelines dictate, it can be a bit tricky. But once it's done, it's a rock-solid, polished, and enjoyable way to play a Tetris-like block stacker 
in a hardcore and or competitive environment without too much stress. Now, this analysis may not be much on the mechanical side, but it's only because it's pretty much identical from Nopomino. So I can just move on from here if you don't mind. That was a super quick look at Nopomino and Tecmino, two very interesting customizable block stackers meant for a hardcore audience. One geared towards experimental players testing different methods of doing things in some weird ways, and the other just testing, tuning, and honing your skills in an environment suitable to your needs, and possibly neurological disorders like autism spectrum disorder, which is what I have. At least I can focus pretty well without having to resort to a third party modification for accessibility's sake. That about does it for this episode. Thank you, and good night. <laughs>